N my opinion would be to uh, go through the modules. And so the modules are set in sort of the sequential order of how the material comes up. So if you hit modules from geometry, you go through and you see just a little introduction, the actual digital text all in one, if you want to just view the whole thing. And then you see the lesson by lesson. So here's chapter one, chapter two, and then a test over those, chapter three, four, a test over those, five, then the midterm. So it, it gives you the sequential order of what needs to be done by the midterm and, and so on. And uh, when you're looking through these, uh, for the geometry, the lessons, even though they have points next to them, they're, the grades for those are not included in the overall score. The scores are only quiz, test, midterm, final. And that's true for both classes, and it's the, it's the same breakdown for both classes. Okay? So it's 20% quiz, 20% test, 25% uh, midterm, 35% final. Okay? And so that's where uh, your points are coming from. I say that. I still encourage you to do the lessons. Inside the lessons for geometry, uh, you're going to see the text. Okay? So this is the exact same thing that you see if you read the text individually. So you can see the text. Embedded in the text will be video captures of me lecturing on the same material. So if that's something that's helpful for you, you can view that. And then you'll see here in the different topics or different pages of the text, um, you have embedded the practice problem. And now these practice or homework problems, and again, this is true for both courses, the practice problems and the homework problems are the problems that your quizzes and tests will pull from. So you might not get the same quiz and test every time you take it, okay, or you might not get the same quiz or test as anyone else, okay, but the pool of questions that it pulls from are going to be from the homework questions. Okay, so it's in your best interest to do the homework, okay, but again, if you're confident, if you already know the material, I mean, it's the whole point of this online course is it's self-paced. That means you have to auto-regulate, I mean, not just when you decide to do the work and how much work, your time you put into it, but also what do you focus your time on. And so if you already know how to factor and then you come to the factoring section, um, you don't have to do all the homework from that or you can do a little bit of it to make sure you're, you're good, but it's the quizzes and tests that, uh, that are the graded assessments that uh, that you need to be able to show proficiency on. Okay, so as far as that goes, the modules uh, for both courses are in that sequential order. So for the pre-calc course, again, what you see is there's a few prerequisites. These, what that means is these are the skills from Algebra 1 that you should be really solid on. Okay? And so uh, there are some quizzes for those and then uh, a text that kind of goes over it. But the whole thing, uh, the prerequisites for pre-cal, these are graded slightly differently okay, in that you can reattempt the problem any number of times until you get the score that you want. Okay, so you're not going to do a complete new reattempt. You're just going to retry a problem. So like if I'm going through and I do this problem and I'm not sure what the answer is, let's say I put uh, 1 over 6 and I submit it and it's wrong. Okay, what that means is it says try another similar question. So if I click on that, it gives me a new question to try and I can just keep doing that until I get the right answer. And so if I get the wrong answer here, I can go try another similar question. Okay. And so in, again, it's not that you're looking for the ones that you can get right, but you can just keep doing those until you get them right. Uh, but the, um, the required, the prerequisites in the pre-calc, that's the only place where that happens. All the other things uh, you need to, um, um, all the other quizzes, when you reattempt a question for the second or third time, you get uh, partial points. You get 25% off the previous one. So you get uh, first time through, you get 100% of the points. If you miss it and try again and you get it right, then you get 75% of the points. If you miss that, you get 50%, then 25%. So after four attempts, hey, it's not worth any points. Uh, move on to the next question um, if you are in that. Okay? So that is oops in the pre-calc. Again, modules is the, is the easiest way to see the structure of the course, prerequisites, and then chapters one through whatever. And you can see here that it has that textbook. The answer key to the textbook is a separate link, so it'll show you what the answers are to the homework problems that are embedded in the text. Okay, and then um, what I would recommend uh, as far as the pacing. Okay, and if you go to the announcements in both of these, you should see this is the email that I sent, so the announcements for 
uh, both courses. If you haven't already, take, take a quick look at that and look for the intro. And what you're going to see is uh, a breakdown of what the course involves. So in both of them, it's that same breakdown, quizzes 20%, test 20, midterm 25, final 35. And then I have a list of all of the graded assignments. Okay? And I wanted to make sure I had that someplace for you. So you, if you want to take a physical checklist of it, you can. Okay? Notice uh, when, I see, or when I show these, it says one of three, two of three, three of three. Okay? Every graded assessment, every quiz or test, uh, you get three attempts, up to three attempts on. Okay? Uh, and again, within that attempt, if you answer a question wrong, you can retry it and get partial points for it. Okay, but you don't get to redo it for full points like you did on that prerequisite and like you will on your homework assignments. Homework, you, it's because it's not um, grading that and, and putting that toward your overall grade, you can do the same thing. Just hit uh, reattempt problem and it'll bring up a new, or try similar problem, it'll bring up a new problem. If you hit reattempt problem, you can just try to answer the same question multiple times. And okay, so I'm going to repeat that because there's two different possible instructions. Uh, the links when you're doing your homework, and I'll pull one up here really quickly, okay, are going to give you one of two options if you miss a question. Okay, it's going to give you the option to try a similar question, and that one it resets and brings you a brand new question. Starts over with the points, or it will give you a, uh, the option to reattempt a question. Okay, so on the reattempt, what that means is it will give you. Um, So if I have you, uh, or if you are working on homework, and again, this is the same for both. Okay, so if you answer a homework question here, how many dimensions, and let's say you get the wrong answer, submit. Okay, on this one, uh, again, I guess, oh, these are set where if you're wrong, uh, you can check your answer, okay, or you can hit try similar question. It'll just pull up a new version of that question. Okay, how many dimensions? Again, it's the same one until you get it correct. When you get it correct, you get visual feedback that you're right. It'll be a green box with a green check mark. If you're wrong, it'll be a red X, a red box with a red X. And if you get part of it right, part of it wrong, it'll be yellow um, and uh, you'll, it'll show that you got partial points on it. But once again, you can always go back and try similar questions. So even if you get an answer right, uh, the way that these are all graded is um, they're graded as practice, meaning in all of your homeworks and anything that is set, anything that is a practice quiz or practice test or so on, uh, you can go through, you can do individual problems by hitting try similar question. If you want to just retry the whole thing, just hit create new version. It pulls up and, and resets all the questions from that entire assignment. Okay, so uh, homework uh, you can use to practice, although I tried to include uh, practice quizzes and tests for every set, every graded assessment that you'll do, including the midterm and final, so that you can practice that as much as you want. Okay. And this is sort of the pacing strategy. I would, or the midterm covers the first five chapters in geometry, and then the final covers everything from chapter one through chapter eight. In the pre-cal course, uh, as far as the first final, or the first midterm covers the first four chapters, and then the second the final covers everything up through chapter 8 with the addition of the chapter 12 stuff, which is an introduction to limits. Again, kind of getting into a little bit of the, what you will begin with calculus. Okay, and so the final will cover all of that material. So th that gives you the pacing. Okay, um, as far as uh, the um, quizzes and tests, let me go back to the whole uh, number of attempts. There's going to be three graded attempts for each of those and I will take the highest one. And so what happens is if you take attempt one and you're happy with that score, that's fine. You don't have to go any further. If you take attempt two to try to improve your score and you do worse, that's not gonna count. I will physically go in there and I will remove it. Okay, because until I remove it, it's, that score is calculated in your grade, but I will physically remove them uh, each day, uh, any of the lower attempts. Okay, and so you can continue with that. The grade that you see on the grades here, again, these are especially for people who had my class where this did not map, uh, but the grades that you see on your grade link here uh, is the grade in the class as calculated. Okay, so you, you should be able to, it, it'll be easier with respect to that. You can see what your grade is in this class at all times. Again, assuming I've deleted your low scores, right? If you have scores that are lower, 
Uh, once those are removed, that grade will be your overall grade. Okay, um, let me go to uh, talk about um, sort of the credit for the classes. All right, so both of these classes, there's some options. Okay? Uh, most of you are doing this for placement, okay? credit and placement. Okay? But there, you have some options. You have some options based on your grade and how it affects your um, GPA. Okay? And that is, uh, let me start with geometry. With geometry, you guys have the option to just take the geometry portion of the course. And okay? so the geometry portion, uh, to start with here, when you look in the modules, goes from chapter one to chapter eight. So if you go chapter one all the way through chapter eight, complete the final on that material, and you get the grade that allows you to earn credit, uh, you will go into Honors Algebra two at Jesuit. If you're in a different school, you'll go into whatever track they have for you. I, I know we've discussed it with some of you that your school allows you to do uh, the same thing that we do, but uh, this course is designed to get through geometry, place you into Algebra 2 or Algebra 2 Honors. If you do these P chapters, these P chapters are pre-cal prep chapters, and there's six of them. Okay, if you do those here at Jesuit uh, and you complete the final, which again, it, it's optional, for, but it counts if you are uh, in or if you are trying to place into pre-cal, if you do all of the geometry and you do the chapter P material uh, and you do this uh, pre-cal prep final, then uh, if you still earn the A or A minus, uh, you will go into honors pre-cal next year. Okay? And again, if your school has already arranged it with me, there is a possibility of that as well. But the pre-cal prep stuff, the chapter P stuff is optional for you. Okay? And within that optional stuff, there are the quiz attempts one, two, and three, and so on. But there's, it's limited in the amount of graded material for that, okay? because you just have uh, three tests and your final, if you're doing the pre-cal prep stuff. Uh, but you do need to make sure you show the mastery of it. Those will be graded within the test section and the, the quiz sections, or the test sections and the final sections uh, when you get your overall grade. Okay? If you try the pre-cal prep stuff and then you realize, oops, that's not gonna work, uh, I will remove those from your grades and, and you will earn the grade of just the geometry material and then you'll place directly into Algebra 2 next year. Again, questions on that placement? Okay. If you just are doing the geometry portion of the course uh, and you get an, um, an A or A minus, then you'll, or, an, or a B plus, you'll place into uh, Honors Algebra 2. And if you get a B or a uh, or B minus, you would place into um, regular Algebra 2. C on that, we talk about it. You, you may or may not get placement credit for that. Okay, let's talk specifically about this system. Okay, so the system that we're using, it's, it's um, presented through Canvas. The, the easiest way I had mentioned to access everything is probably through modules because that gives you the sequential order. But if you go to assignments, what you should see in assignments is I. I should have had these moved and occasionally they get dragged and moved out of sequence, but these should also be in sequence with all the graded material first. And so you can see here, I put all the quizzes up here, then the test, midterm and final, so you can kind of see what percents they are. I did the same thing with uh, geometry. Okay, so you can kind of see uh, where those are. I, um, so if you wanted to, you could also approach this, uh, the course by going into your assignments and looking to do your uh, required things. Um, the negative to that is that it doesn't give you the links to practice that material. And so that's why I would recommend modules okay, to go in and practice the material first, okay, and then go through. And okay, now, uh, for both courses, it's up to you to figure out what, what works best. But what I would recommend is uh, I would recommend by starting with the practice quiz okay, or in the, um, in the uh, pre-calc, I give you at the beginning of everything, um, oops, looks like it's at the very top. And uh, for you guys, I call what I would say, the, the starting point, I call it uh, focus topics. 
Okay, so these aren't graded, but they're quizzes. So for geometry, I do the practice quiz for the chapter first. And for pre-calc, I do the focus topics. And that just gives you a sense of what you already know going into the chapter. So if you do that, if you go in and you answer these questions, it gives you a sense of if, if you can answer all 13 of these questions right, then you probably don't have to spend a whole lot of time practicing chapter one. You're probably pretty solid on it. Doesn't mean you're guaranteed, but the focus topics is going to help. Uh, these are the main ideas from this chapter that you need to pull away when you're being graded on your midterm and your final. Okay. Um, for the practice test here, the practice quiz, again, uh, for geometry, just gives you a sense of what you already know and don't know. And so when you do the practice, uh, you can see, again, if you get 15 out of 15 on this first practice quiz, you're probably pretty solid on chapter five or chapter one. Uh, you can maybe even begin. Uh, for a lot of you, you already know a lot of the information. And again, it's just something that allows you to self-regulate how much time you put into something. And now, if you struggle on the practice quiz, or let's say you do the practice quiz and do well, and you go in and say, okay, I'm ready for the graded quiz right now, and you struggle, now that's feedback. Go back into the chapters and read through the material or do some of the practice homework problems or the lesson problems, and, and then prepare for your next quiz. Okay. All right. So uh, that's what I would do first uh, as far as um, preparing. Once you do the, let's say, practice quiz or in the pre-calc, once you do your um, focus topics for uh, the chapter, if you go through and before you take your graded assessments, I definitely encourage you to uh, do the practice. Again, for pre-calc, it's, it's just the review problems. Right? The review problems are your, is your practice quiz. And then prepare for your actual chapter test. In geometry, it's specifically called practice quiz. So again, just the terminology is a little bit different, but that's the process. Okay? I would do the focus topics first, and then before you take the chapter tests or the chapter quizzes, do the review problems. Okay? And then before you take the chapter tests, which uh, happen every two chapters, um, there's no practice for that. Uh, other than to go back into the individual chapters and look at either the review or the focus problems. Remember on these, what you are going to see here when you do most of the homework problems, you're going to see in red where it says practice assessment. Okay, what that means is when you write your answer, if you're wrong, you can try another problem. It'll regenerate. Or you can go in and do a whole new version of the entire thing. So if you hit click new, create new version, it'll give you a whole new 24 questions. And the whole idea is that if, if you go through and you answer all these questions correctly, but then you want to come back and review it for the chapter test or for the final or something, uh, you can come back in, just click create new version. It'll bring up a brand new version of that uh, for you. Okay. All right. So the, um, any questions on those before I move on to the last part of what I want to cover? Okay. So the last part of what I want to cover is how the system, or actually one more time, or one more thing. Uh, involving the way this is set up. Um, if you go into pages, so go ahead and click on pages for your link for geometry and for pre-cal. Go into pages. Okay, so pages, it gives you a direct link to the video captures, okay, the, the general video captures of the lessons, not the individual problems. Okay, but if you wanted to, if, if it helps you to watch a video of uh, somebody, um, often it'll be me, sometimes it'll be links to others, especially in the pre-cal uh, material. But if you want to see uh, like where all the videos are for something, you can go directly into pages and then there'll be a direct link. I think there, somebody who's already started a little bit on the course uh, said that sometimes the videos don't show up on the iPad right? and so they don't even start and it looks like there's nothing there. If that's the case, uh, you can kind of get an idea of what the material is, come into the pages, find where that video is, and click on it, and hopefully it will uh, open that link. And there, are, there should be no dead links. So if you get a dead link, it might have something to do with your device that you're looking on. A PC is the ideal device to look at these through. There are some glitches with Apple products, and I'll talk about those in a sec. But the um, PC is the ideal thing, so if something doesn't seem to be working and you have access to a PC, whether it's 
uh, at a library or at your home or an office somewhere that you have access to, uh, I definitely take a look at it there to see uh, if it does work. Now, most of the time, it, it does it does fine with your Apple devices, but there are occasions where it doesn't. Okay. So that's where uh, you can find the links directly to the videos. And for this one, it's embedded in these objectives. So if you click on uh, Chapter One objectives, oops, I, they are not embedded in there. Let me see. Uh, so the videos are their own set of links uh, for a pre-cal. So. Here's the videos for each of the individual chapters, again, if, if you have a hard time finding them or if you just want to review. Okay. All right, so the last thing I want you to do here is go into assignments. Or actually go to, it's uh, probably easier to find it in modules. Go ahead and click on module, sorry. And the first link should be intro. I don't have it there. All right, so for geometry, go ahead and go to the intro to my open math. In pre-calc, what you might need to do is go to assignments. Okay, and then uh, under search for assignment, just start typing the word intro. And I want you to click on those links, please. Okay, what's going to happen is you're going to get access to where all the actual uh, homework is going to be graded. And it's graded in a system called MyOpenMath. And so MyOpenMath allows me to accept answers in the form of equations and graphs and all sorts of things. It's, it's pretty powerful. Okay. If you jump to uh, question two, okay. hopefully you've already filled out the survey in question one. If you have not, please do that to later today. Uh, it's the survey that I sent in a direct link email to you. But what I want you to do here is just take a few minutes to kind of scroll through the, the remaining questions, two through eight, uh, here. This gives you a sense of uh, what my open math looks like, how you're entering answers in it. Okay, and so I want you to see if you can answer the questions embedded there. Hit submit. It'll check your answers. If you need to do something different, uh, you can. Is when you click into this answer field, Notice there's a little yellow arrow box that shows up on the far right. That's access to an equation editor. So if you click that, it actually allows you to enter your answers as fractions or radicals. Right? It allows you to enter pi or the infinity symbol. <coughs> or the DME means does not exist, which is what we use for no solution. That's sort of like the empty set, what you might have used in other classes. Right? And so if you see something like that, that's what it is uh, referring to. Right? But if if you don't know uh, what the sort of uh, the methods for entering certain answers, then uh, go through this uh, equation editor. So when you come to logs, if you need to use log base something, you can set it up here and just highlight the two and change it to whatever you need. So log base five of uh, whatever, 25. Okay, and then you can hit save and it'll put the, it'll enter it the way that it's supposed to be entered. And if you notice or pay attention to it, you might be able to see and make it easier for entering it. So you don't have to use the equation editor for the everything. You now know you use log underscore whatever the base is, and then parentheses whatever's inside the log, and that gives you the general way to answer that. Here, if you're looking for the square root of something, so let's say the square root of five, hit save, it shows you you're entering SQRT parentheses five, and so if you understand that, it just makes it easier to just uh, enter it directly uh, later if you need to. One of the other things that you'll notice as you enter these is uh, most of the time you're going to see a preview of your answer over to the side, meaning if, if I enter my answer here as 1 over 3, I see that it shows up as 1 third right here. Okay. So uh, when if, I'm, if I wanted something to enter, like let's say 1 over 3x, if I wanted that x to be in the denominator and I wrote 1 over 3x like this, notice when I look at my preview, it's not what I wanted. It's not 1 over 3x, it's 1 third x. And so what that then makes you either do is go into your equation editor, set up your fraction, put 1 on the top, 3x in the denominator, oops.
So if I put my 3x in the denominator, now I hit save. Notice it gives you that feedback. Oh, all I needed was to put a parentheses there, and now it puts everything in the denominator. Okay, so if you use the equation editor to learn things, if, if you're uncertain, once you learn them, it's probably easier and quicker to do it directly. Okay, and for the most part, put parentheses around, or grouping symbols around the items that need to be contained together, okay, and that's pretty consistent. Okay, if you need to enter the uh, pi, it's just pi. Once again, if you don't remember that, hit go into the equation editor, hit pi, save, you'll see it's pi. If you need to enter infinity, so if you're doing interval notations, and let's say you go from negative infinity to positive infinity, it's just OO. Okay, the lowercase o, and then OO, parentheses. So this would be, and you can see here in the preview, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, again, if you don't remember that, you can go in here, parentheses, negative infinity, comma, infinity. And when you hit save, it puts it into that form for you. Okay. So definitely use the equation editor uh, if you need to uh, to help gauge uh, how to enter specific answers. Okay. Are there any of my students from last year, anything that started off hard to do as far as entering? The, the logs were hard, right? I mean, for to once you figure it out. Um, oh, roots, like other roots, like if you needed to put in cube root or fourth root, okay, the actual way that you would do it directly is, let's say we're doing cube root, you would say root parentheses three, and then parentheses whatever was inside the root. Now notice here in my preview, I can see that, the cube root of three, but if in, if in doubt, this is mostly for pre-calc students, if in doubt, hit the, um, the equation editor, go to the nth root, and it starts with a three, but you can change it to whatever, like if you needed to change this to seventh root. And then again, it'll show you what that, uh, the methods are for entering. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna kinda go through a little bit and see uh, how things have come up. And there will be, uh, and there, will potentially be some questions involving um, scientific notation, pre-count students mostly. A, uh, there's two different ways to represent scientific notation. The question should uh, give you an indication of what that is, but one would be like it has here, two times 10 to the power of whatever it happens to be, in this case the third. Okay, so that would be one possible way. The other possible way is if it's set up to be, um, if it's set up to be scientific notation specifically, because it's, it is a question type I can enter or use, you might uh, be asked to uh, use XX. Um, it looks like it's, this one's not set up that way, but if you hit XX, it will uh, be times 10 to the power of. And so again, and that will be in the instructions. Otherwise, just use times 10 to the power of with physically uh, entering them in. Okay, again, let's see. Uh, the caret symbol is how you get powers. So if you were entering this expression, 8x to the power of, it's shift 6, gives you the caret symbol, plus 10x, minus 5. Um, the order of factors and terms usually does not matter. If it, if it asks you in to write it in standard form or general form, it probably is asking you to write it in a specific order. But uh, as far as factors go, uh, x plus 1 times x minus 1 is the same as x minus 1 plus x plus 1. It doesn't matter the order. It'll mark it correct in either way. All right. Go ahead and jump to question 5 if you're not there yet. Uh, I would just want to talk about some graphing stuff here really quickly. All right, so because um, both groups are going to be asked to uh, find coordinates of points at some point along the way. Okay, when you're finding coordinates, an ordered pair, okay, you do need to uh, use parentheses. So for me, again, your questions will be different than what I have. But for me, my uh, lower point here is an x coordinate of 0, a y of negative 2. And then since I'm listing both points, I just separate with a comma, and I put my second order pair, which is 4, 2. 
And so that would be how I would enter these. And again, I can submit and verify that I did it correctly. But if you are uh, entering more than one answer, just separate it with a comma. No spaces are necessary. Okay, and then jump to uh, question uh, eight. So eight is a graphing tool. Um, the pre-cal students, you guys are going to be using graphing tools a lot more than the um, geometry students. And, and your guys' tools will range from all the different functions, like square roots, parabolas, uh, absolute values. You'll have logs, um, exponents, um, and powers. And so you guys are going to have to use this a little bit more. Uh, you will almost always create a graph using just by plotting two points. Okay? And so here for this linear function right here, if you wanted to sketch this graph, y equals negative 7 halves x plus 4, okay, hopefully everybody in this class could understand what that equation tells you. You have a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of down 7 over 2. And so that gives you the chance to mark your two points. And so if you s first select your intercept here, so the point 4, I place a, a, a point on 4, the y-intercept. And then for me, I'm going down 7 over 2. So if I go down 7 over 2 and I plot my second point, once I hit two points, I'm now good. I can check my answer. I get my feedback that I was correct. Okay, now, let's say I accidentally, as I was moving down, I, I put another point on here somewhere and accidentally put a, a second equation or a second graph. If you want to remove the graphs, you don't have to clear all and start over every time. All you need to do to clear a graph is drag one of the points off the screen or off the grid and it will disappear. Okay, so if I wanted to move this, let's say I put the wrong y-intercept and I needed it to go to two, I can slide my points anywhere along. Okay, but if I want to start over completely, just drag it off the, the grid or off the coordinates and uh, you can retry it from there. Okay. This is especially helpful in the algebra or the pre-cal uh, sections if you're doing multiple, like if you have uh, piecewise functions where you're doing uh, different functions for different parts and, and you get two of them done and you're working on your third one and you mess up, just drag it off the screen and, and you can continue from there. All right. More than likely, the questions that you're going to have are going to be uh, have to do with entering things. How do you enter something? Okay. The easiest way to ask me a question is within the question itself. So let's say you were doing this graph and you just couldn't figure it out. If you scroll down and see this link that says message instructor about this question, what that does is it sends me a direct message from you. So I, you don't have to put your name on it. It's already there. And it actually includes the question as well. So, like, when if you click on this, okay, oops, I'm going to change this so you can only uh, send it to me. But if you click my name and then send it, I get this message and I see the actual question that you used. I can go in there and access it or change it. If you see a mistake on a question, that's fine. Let me know. I can fix it. Hopefully, I've gone through it. Uh, this year, so hopefully we caught all the mistakes or most of the mistakes. Okay, but that's the easiest way, best way uh, to uh, get in touch with me. Okay. The, um, okay, and so what I see when I go in there is I can uh, find who sent uh, questions and then I can get back to you um, on those. Okay. And when you get a, a question returned to you, what's going to happen is when you next time you access something here, right underneath your name, there's going to be a red link that says like one message, two messages, or whatever here. Just click on that, and it'll open up your message system uh, inside MyOpenMath. It's not going to go to your email addresses. It's just going to be directly inside there. 